Sony owns a fair few iconic franchises, many dating right back to the original PlayStation. But while we're pretty familiar with the likes of ongoing series such as God of War, Horizon and Gran Turismo, there are plenty of PlayStation franchises that haven't seen the light of day in a long time. So in this video we're going to be taking a look at the status of PlayStation's many IPs and checking in on when we last heard from them. I'll be going through the list in alphabetical order all the way from Ape Escape to Vib Ribbon, so let's get started. We start with Ape Escape, the iconic platforming series that started life way back in 1999 on the PlayStation. Believe it or not, it's actually one of Sony's most prolific series, with over 13 titles across the franchise, although many of those are party games and spin-offs that utilised various Sony peripherals like the iToy and PlayStation Move. While the character of Spike appeared in Sony's Smash Bros ripoff PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale, the last time we saw a mainline entry into the Ape Escape franchise was all the way back in 2005, although we did get an RPG RPG spin-off title for the PSP in 2008 called Ape Quest. While I'd say it's pretty unlikely we'll be getting a new Ape Escape anytime soon, you can at least play Ape Escapes 1, 2 and On The Loose on your PS5 right now. Here's hoping Sony adds Ape Escape 3 to that list in lieu of a new game. Next up we have the tactical RPG series Ark The Lad, which started out life as a trilogy of games for the original PlayStation. While the franchise was huge in Japan back in its day, it didn't get a release in the West until the release of an Ark The Lad collection, which comprised the whole trilogy and was released back in 2002. While there was a brace of PS2 games, Twilight of the Spirits and End of Darkness in the mid noughties the, the only other Ark the Lad game we've had since has been the mobile game Ark the Lad R, which launched in 2018 and was shut down in 2021. So in short, the future for this dormant RPG franchise is looking a little precarious. At least you can still play Twilight of the Spirits on your PS5 though. The adorable little Astrobot is next up on our list, and is one of the few Sony franchises that we categorically know we'll see more of, all due to the announcement of a new game at the recent State of Play showcase. Building on the success of 2020's Astro's Playroom, which was bundled with every PS5, the new game, simply titled Astrobot, looks like much more of the same, and that is music to my ears as the last title was an enormously fun platformer. Astro's Playroom was such a critical success for Sony that it led to the crew behind the series, Team Asobi, becoming a standalone studio outside of their previous status as an internal team within Japan Studio. More power to them and their tiny little Astro Boy, I say. Bloodborne, one of the firm fan favourites that's on Sony's rosters. The 2015 game was a huge success for Sony, offering up a werewolf hunting twist on From Software's classic Souls-like template. It struck such a chord that fans have been clamouring for a sequel, prequel, remake, remaster, anything from Sony ever since, but to absolutely no avail. Whether we will ever see a follow-up to this stone-cold classic is yet to be seen, but all I'm saying is that next year, 2025, marks the 10th anniversary of the game. Come on Sony, pull your finger out. On top of Bloodborne, there's also Demon Souls, which falls under Sony's remit as well. While the original was published by Atlas and Bandai Namco outside of Japan, the PS5 remake was very much a Sony affair. Whether we'll ever see a direct follow-up to Demon Souls, or even its predecessor Kingsfield, is a big question mark though, especially when From Software are a little busy with something called Elden Ring. One of Sony's recent one-off titles, 2019's Days Gone, appears to be staying as just that, a solo affair. While the game saw a mixed critical reception at release, it sold well and has had a steady cult appeal since, leading to speculation that there could possibly be a sequel. But as a result of the lengthy development period, Sony allegedly turned down the chance to greenlight a sequel, and it appears that the developers behind the game Ben Studio have supposedly moved on to a different IP that utilises the open world mechanics that they created with Days Gone. Next up we have Dreams, the incredibly ambitious game creator sim from Media Molecule, the team behind Little Big Planet. Dreams was officially announced by Sony back at E3 2015, but didn't launch until 2020 after being released via an early access program that was a first for Sony. Media Molecule used Dreams as a platform to release several in-house titles over the years, including the charming little puzzle game Tren, which came out just last summer. While you can still buy the game for your PS5, Media Molecule have now ended support for Dreams as of September 2023, which also effectively cancelled the planned online multiplayer mode too. And sadly, Media Molecule suffered as a part of the Sony layoffs in 2023, so what's next for the highly creative studio is a bit uncertain. 
Everybody's Golf, aka Hot Shots Golf in the US, is a sports series that dates all the way back to 1997 and is one of Sony's evergreen franchises. With 12 games across the series and Everybody's Golf title has appeared on every major Sony console bar the PS5, with the latest release being 2019's Everybody's Golf. Where you can play the original two games as well as 2017's Everybody's Golf on your PS5 right now, surely it's just a matter of time until we see another installment in this long-running series. One of Sony's more esoteric franchises, Fat Princess is just a bit of an odd one. Since the release of the first game in 2009, there have been two games since, both releasing in 2015, and each one has been different from the last. While the original game was more of a real-time strategy game, its sequel Fat Princess Adventures was a dungeon crawler, and Fat Princess Piece of Cake was a puzzle game for mobiles and the PS Vita. So in short, who the hell knows what's next for this eclectic franchise? Ghost of Tsushima is next on our list, and while the series is very much in its infancy with only one main title to date, its success might pave the way for future titles. Since the game's release in 2020, we've had a PC release and a director's cut edition for PS5, but beyond that we haven't had any concrete news on a sequel. There have been indications that the developer behind the game, Sucker Punch, are gearing up to make a sequel that could eventually see a release on PS5, but as I said, nothing solid right now. Sony have also announced the development of a film adaptation to potentially be directed by Chad Stileski, the man behind all four John Wick films, so they clearly have high hopes for the game becoming a larger franchise. Now onto one of Sony's current big hitters, God of War. While the franchise dates back nearly 20 years to the original game's release on the PS2 in 2005, it has had a massive revival in the last six years with Kratos' Norse set adventures. The latest game in the series, Ragnarok, launched in late 2022 and has had a DLC expansion in the form of Valhalla since, so the franchise is in very good health. With that in mind, it's only a matter of time until we can expect to hear about what's next for one of Sony's flagship franchises. Next up is another PlayStation mainstay, the legendary racing franchise Gran Turismo. Since the original game's release back in 1997, the series has had eight mainline games to date, with the latest Gran Turismo 7 releasing in early 2022 for the PS4 and PS5 in time for the franchise's 25th anniversary. While it's a pretty safe bet to expect another game in the coming years, we might be waiting until the end of the PS5's life cycle or perhaps even the launch of the PS6 until we see another entry for Sony's flagship racer. In the meantime, you can always check out the Gran Turismo movie, which was released in 2023 and is broadly alright from what I've heard. The outlook is not as bright for our next series, Gravity Rush. With only two games to the franchise since the original game's release for the PS Vita in 2012, it's more of an outside chance that we'll see another entry anytime soon. Sadly, this is compounded by the fact that the dev team behind the games, aptly titled Team Gravity, was shut down back in 2020, a few years after the release of Gravity Rush 2. Both games are still very much playable on PS5 though, the original via its console remaster. Right, now onto one of the most successful franchises in Sony's recent history, Helldivers, which aside from the whole PSN account linking fiasco, is in incredibly rude health. It's only been a few short months since the launch of Helldivers 2 and the game has already sold more copies than the population of the developer's home country of Sweden. Couple that with a long tail of content drops, including regular war bonds and an evolving game world and map, and it looks like we'll be enforcing managed democracy for a long, long time to come. Oh, and you can also play the original twin stick shooter game on your PS5 as well, which is well worth your time. The Horizon franchise is another of Sony's recent big hitters, with over 30 million game sales since the release of Horizon Zero Dawn back in 2017. Since then, we've had a DLC story expansion called The Frozen Wilds, which was released in late 2017, a full-fat sequel entitled Forbidden West that launched in early 2022, a PSVR 2 game called Call of the Mountain that came out in early 2023, and finally, a DLC story expansion for Forbidden West called Burning Shores, which also launched in 2023. So in short, that's a lot of Horizon in a short space of time, and there is a lot more on the way. Aside from PC releases for both main games, the developers behind the franchise have confirmed that they are working on both an online co-op game set within the Horizon universe, as well as a third game in the series. In stark contrast to Horizon, we haven't seen an infamous game for the best part of 10 years, and that was with the release of the infamous Second Sun expansion, First Light, back in 2014. Since the original game's launch in 2009 for the PS3, there have been three main games and a handful of DLC expansions, but we've heard nary a peep from the franchise since 2014, which does not bode well for any future instalments. That's largely down to the fact that the studio behind the infamous franchise then went on to make Ghost of Tsushima, which itself launched in 2020 
money for the PS4 and later on the PS5. With the huge success of Ghost of Tsushima, it's unlikely that Sucker Punch will return to Infamous. But that's not to say that another studio might not pick up the baton, but at this point the franchise has been dormant for a very long time. Next up is Invisimals, the augmented reality franchise that is way bigger than it has any right to be. The series comprises five main games, most of which are AR games for either the PSP or PS Vita, with the exception of The Lost Kingdom for the PS3. On top of all that, there has been a range of toys, trading cards, and even an animated series that aired back in 2013. With that all said though, we haven't seen the little critters since 2016, so it's likely that this series might just be staying caged in the past. Now here's a real blast from the past, Naughty Dog's classic action platformer Jack and Daxter. While there hasn't been a new Jack game since 2009's Jack and Daxter The Lost Frontier, which wasn't even made by Naughty Dog, we've had two compilations set since then. First 2012's HD collection for the PS3, and then the Jack and Daxter bundle that was released in 2017. What the people really want though is a new Jack and Daxter sequel, and the likelihood of that happening is sadly pretty slim. But it's not completely out of the question. Naughty Dog themselves have explored the possibility of a new game in the series, with art for a Jack 4 even existing in the Art of Naughty Dog book. So who knows? Delving even further back into Sony's library, you will find the Jet Moto franchise, which has not seen the light of day for a whopping 25 years. The Futuristic Racer series comprises a trilogy of games that all launched for the PS1 between 1996 and 1999, but two subsequent entries into the franchise have both been cancelled mid-development. The first, Jet Moto 2124, would have come out hot on the heels of Jet Moto 3, while the second, Jet Moto Solar, was rumoured to be in development for the PS2. With both of these games not seeing the light of day, this franchise has all but stalled. Now on to Killzone, one of Sony's first person shooter franchises from the heyday of the PS2 and PS3 era. Between 2004 and 2013, the series saw six entries, with a trilogy of console games, a pair of portable adventures and Shadowfall for the PS4, which was the last time we saw anything to do with the franchise. That was over a decade ago. Much like Infamous, Killzone was once one of Sony's flagship franchises, which has now kind of fallen out of favour. That's in part due to the fact that the developers behind the shooter series, Guerrilla Games, then went on to be the developer and custodian of the Horizon franchise, which has naturally pushed Killzone way down the pecking order. But there is still interest in the franchise to this day, just look at the comments section on any of our Firearms Expert Reacts videos to see that, so there might still be hope for a Killzone resurgence one day. Next up we have Knack, which I'm not gonna lie, when I started making this video I completely forgot about it. Somewhat bewilderingly, there have been two Knack games, with the first releasing as a launch title for the PS4 and a sequel following that up four years later. While neither were exactly critical darlings, the second game in particular sold quite poorly, so the chances of a Knack 3 are pretty slim. Next up we have The Last of Us, the most recent of Naughty Dog's franchises. While there are technically more remakes and remasters of The Last of Us than there are actual numbered entries in the series, it is another of Sony's crown jewels when it comes to their recent IPs, a status that has been further cemented by the critically acclaimed TV adaptation. While Naughty Dog have now confirmed that they have stopped development of an online multiplayer game set within the world, they have stated that they have more than one ambitious single player game in the works, and there's a good chance that one of those could be The Last of Us Part 3. Either way, with a second season of the TV show around the corner, there's definitely an appetite for more from the franchise. Ah, Little Big Planet, the highly creative and ambitious platforming series that introduced us to the adorable little Sackboy. Since the release of the original game for the PS3 back in 2008, there have been Little Big Planet games for every major PlayStation console and PlayStation Move. While we haven't had a numbered entry in the series since 2014's Little Big Planet 3, there have been plenty of Sackboy related spin offs, the most recent being the Sumo Digital developed Sackboy A Big Adventure in 2020. The original developers of the franchise Media Molecule have long since moved on to Dreams, which itself has now rounded down, but plenty of other devs have worked across the LBP or Sackboy IPs, so there is a pretty strong chance we'll see more of the franchise in some capacity in the future. Loco Roco, the platforming game with a title that just rolls off the tongue. Since the original was released for the PSP back in 2006, we've had two further entries into the series, with the latest Loco Roco Midnight Carnival launching in 2009. While it's been a good 15 years since then, you can play all three games in the series on your PS5 via remasters, which are handily keeping the franchise relevant. While it would definitely be coming out of left field, there's still a chance that we might see a new Loco Roco at some point in the future. 
Medieval is literal proof that you can bring a long dead series back to life, and that thought gives a glimmer of hope to many dormant Sony franchises on this list. You see, while the original two games launched for the PS1 back in 1998 and 2000 respectively, after the portable spin-off Resurrection, the franchise was flatlining for the best part of 15 years. That is until it was brought back from the dead, I'm really stretching these puns out now, for 2019's all singing, all dancing medieval remake. While the reception to the remake was rather mixed, it just goes to show that Sony is still keeping tabs on some of those old franchises. Next up we've got the off-road racing series Motorstorm, which criminally hasn't had a new game since the 2012 release of Motorstorm RC. To make matters worse, Sony shut down the team behind the franchise Evolution Studios way back in 2016, although they did hold on to the IP for the franchise. Fortunately, a good chunk of the staff who worked at Evolution were taken on by Codemasters, but as for the Motorstorm series itself, it's pretty much in limbo right now. A quick word here on Evolution's other racing game Drive Club, which was released as a bit of a messy PS4 launch title before being extensively updated right up until Evolution Studios' closure. Sadly, it will likely now remain a rare barn find for budding racing game enthusiasts. Parappa the Rapper, one of the PS1's chief mascots, has had an enduring pop culture legacy over the years, but not a huge amount of games to his name. The original game launched all the way back in 1996, and was followed up by the spin-off Amjamalami in 1996 before a fully fledged sequel for the PS2 in 2001. Since then, we've seen a remake of the original game, later revealed to be a remake of the PSP port with high res textures, which launched around the game's 20th anniversary. While you can play both of the original games on PS5 right now, Parappa's music career definitely needs a comeback. Parappa the Rapper Drill Edition, anyone? From one rhythm game to another now, as next up is the Patapon series. The original trilogy all released for the PSP between 2007 and 2011, and the first two games eventually got ported to the PS4 in 2017. But other than that, there has been little love from Sony for this quirky little franchise, which has led to a few non-Sony sanctioned spiritual successes taking the reins. The most recent of which is a Kickstarter for a game called Ratatan, which launched its campaign in summer 2023. As for what Sony has planned, it's anyone's guess. Next up, we've got one of the longest running PlayStation franchises, Ratchet and Clank. With the first game releasing way back in 2002 and the most recent launching in 2021, this prolific platforming series has been around for some time. With 17 games today, it's undeniably one of Sony's core IPs, despite only two of those titles releasing in the last decade. As I said, the latest game, Rift Apart, launched in 2021 for the PS5 and even saw a PC release in 2023, which indicates the series is pretty high up the pecking order within Sony's roster. It helps matters that Sony now fully owns the core studio behind Ratchet's development, Insomniac Games. Speaking of which, Yep, another Insomniac franchise is Resistance, a franchise that last saw the light of day in 2012 with the PS Vita release of Burning Skies. Before that though, there was a critically acclaimed trilogy of shooters for the PS3 that launched in 2006, 2008 and 2011 respectively, as well as a PSP spin-off called Retribution. The franchise had some interesting ideas, and a whole arsenal of futuristic weaponry, much like Ratchet and Clank, but chances of a Resistance 4 are pretty slim. Insomniac themselves have said that a new game in the franchise is a a long shot, with neither the developers or Sony particularly interested in exploring the series further, which is a shame if you ask me. What's worse is that, much like the Killzone trilogy, the original PS3 games are locked to that console, so you can't even play them on your PS5. Returnal, another recent Sony exclusive, is very much in its infancy and could still be just a one-off. But since its release in 2021, the game has had a solid tale of additional content that's further bolstered the game. The game comes from the Finnish developers Housemark, who have made a fair few other PlayStation exclusive shooters that could also see future releases, including Alienation, Super Stardust and its spiritual successor Resogun. In the wake of Returnal's success, Housemark officially became a PlayStation studio in 2021, so there's every chance that we might see a Returnal 2, or Returnal? Or one of their other shooters in the near future. One of Sony's most beloved development studios, Team Ico, who were a part of Japan's studio and responsible for classic games Ico, Shadow of the Colossus, and most recently The Last Guardian, have been shut down for well over a decade at this point. While The Last Guardian came out after their closure, that was developed by Fumito Ueda's independent team Gen Design, who are currently working on a new unannounced game. Whether this will be exclusive to Sony is unknown at this stage, but it does leave these classics out in the wilderness a bit. At least you can still play The Last Guardian and Shadow of the Colossus on your PS5, the latter via a shiny new remake. But poor old Ico remains lost in the past at this point, 
Here's hoping we see a remake of that gem too at some point. Oh, and we also get a glimpse of Wanda in the Astrobot trailer, so he's still on Sony's radar at least. Singstar, once one of the most prolific of Sony franchises and alongside Guitar Hero and Rock Band, the peak of the social music game era, is now almost certainly dead. It has been seven years since we last saw a game in the series with the release of Singstar Celebration. And what's worse, the iconic team behind the franchise, London Studio, was brutally shut down earlier this year in widespread layoffs. So the future of this once popular singing series is looking pretty bad. Bleak. Sly Cooper, another Sucker Punch Studio franchise, has sadly been AWOL since 2013's Thieves in Time. And what's worse is, again like Resistance and Killzone, you can't play any of the series on modern consoles. So if you want to play a Sly Cooper game in 2024, you'll need to dig out your PS3 and get the Sly Cooper collection. In lieu of no new game in the series, it's a real shame that Sony have effectively locked a fair few of their PS3 era franchises in the past. In his heyday, Sly was one of Sony's most popular mascots, alongside Ratchet and Clank and Jack and Daxter, but sadly Sly has been discarded like an old toy. Another Sony franchise locked in the past is SOCOM US Navy SEALs, the third-person tactical shooter series that had 10 games released across the PS2, PS3 and PSP between 2002 and 2011. The last entry in the series, SOCOM 4, roughly coincided with the closure of the development studio behind the game, Zipper Interactive, who at the time they were shut down were working on another entry in the franchise. With it being so long since the release of the last game, I think it's pretty fair to say we've seen the last of SOCOM. Next up we have another of Sony's current flagships, the Spider-Man series. Since Sony acquired the game rights to the Web Slinger back in 2014, we've seen two numbered entries into the series, as well as a Miles Morales spin-off that launched alongside the PS5. And despite hacks that impacted developers Insomniac Games back in 2023 and revealed the studio's roadmap for the future, it's a pretty safe bet that we'll see a third game in the incredibly popular franchise, if not more. On a separate but related note, Insomniac are also working on a Wolverine game, which is set within the same continuity as their Spider-Man titles. So in a decade's time, we could be looking at a video gaming equivalent to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. From one of their most well-known titles to perhaps one of their least with the PlayStation Move-centric franchise Sports Champions. The series is basically Sony's belated answer to the mammoth success of Wii Sports, but well, the franchise never really stuck the landing. There have been two games to date with the last launching in 2012, both of which relied on the PlayStation Move peripheral. And unless Sony brings back a revival of that tech, I doubt we're ever seeing this mini franchise ever again. Speaking of PlayStation Move franchises, there's also Start the Party, which similar to Sports Champions only saw two game releases, the last of which also launched in 2012. And to be honest, neither game in the party game series really set the world alight, so let's just leave them in the past. One of Sony's most popular franchises from the PS1 era, Siphon Filter, has now become one of the company's long lost series. We haven't seen a release in the Spy Shooter series since Logan's Shadow for the PSP in 2007, which is just criminal. The original trilogy are still held in extremely high regard, even if they might not have aged so well. But unlike other long lost Sony franchises, you can actually play the majority of the Siphon Filter franchise on your PS5 right now, which is great. But whether this iconic series has any brand recognition anymore might count against it when Sony considers what to reboot next. Twisted Metal, Sony's vehicular combat game, is a very weird little franchise to pin down. The series has been around since 1995 and was undeniably at its peak during the PS1 era, but since then there have been a handful of Twisted Metal games on the PS2 and PS3, including a soft reboot of sorts that launched in 2012, which also happens to be the last time an original game in the series was released. The PS2 game Twisted Metal Black eventually found its way onto the PS4 via a port, but other than that the franchise has been kinda quiet. That is until a TV show with an all-star cast came the hell out of nowhere last year. Starring Anthony Mackie and Stephanie Beatrice, the show did so well that it has already been renewed for a second season. What this means for any future games is anyone's guess, but the brand is firing on all cylinders again, so why not greenlight a new game? Right, we're nearly done with this mammoth look at Sony's franchises, but we've still got a big one to go. Uncharted. Yeah, Nathan Drake was effectively the poster boy for PlayStation for nearly a decade from 2007 to 2016, but he had his swan song in Uncharted for A Thief's End. 
That game wasn't the last we've seen of the franchise though. As a follow-up, The Lost Legacy that starred rival treasure hunter Chloe Fraser and mercenary Nadine Ross released in 2017. So there's clearly still scope for more adventures in the Uncharted franchise without Nathan Drake. Since then, we've seen the Legacy of Thieves collection launch in 2022, which bundled a Thief's End and Lost Legacy together into one compilation. And around the same time, we also had the Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg starring film adaptation, with a sequel supposedly in production. So there's still definitely gas in the tank for the adventure franchise. The interactive horror game Until Dawn is one of Sony's IPs we'll be seeing again, albeit via a remake of the original 2015 game. The fact that we're getting a remake though might trigger more interest in the series, which has only had two releases to date, with the other being the PSVR title Rush of Blood. We'll just have to wait and see how the remake performs when it releases, as to whether this franchise will be given a new lease of life. And we end this list with the legendary Vib Ribbon. Wait, what do you mean you've never heard of Vib Ribbon? The classic rhythm game has been knocking about since 1999 when the first game launched on the PS1. But to be fair, if you're an American watching this video, Vib Ribbon didn't release in the States until 2014, after the then Sony CEO Sean Layden name dropped it at E3 2014 without realising that it never launched in the US. Anyway, the original was followed up by Mojib Ribbon and Vib Ripple, both of which never made it out of Japan. Maybe little Vibri the Rabbit will finally get their spot in the limelight one day. And that, my friends, is the current state of PlayStation's franchises. Please let me know if there are any others that I've missed in the comments section down below. And make sure to subscribe to GameSpot as we've got a few other Sony-related features to take a look at, such as a video on the best and worst features of PlayStation consoles and a look at all the upcoming PS5 exclusives. Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you next time.